Well, hello there, and welcome to the Apartment Building Investing Podcast. I am your host, Michael Blanc. I'm super excited that you're here. Now, some of you guys may be wondering, what the heck are we doing with DealMaker Live? We are going through some extraordinary times right now, and we're recording this uh, sometime in March. It'll be, and you, when you're listening, it'll probably be in April. Not exactly sure what's going to be happening a few weeks from today, but uh, certainly events in the spring and the summer have been canceled, and DealMaker Live is no different, except for us. We're going virtual. You know what? Because we can. So we're going to have DealMaker Live just the way that we had, except we're going to do it online. Things are going to be a little different, and we're going to release details as they become available. But you can still go get tickets at DealMakerLiveEvent.com, except we're going to do it online. All right, we're going to have the same speaker line, the same panels. Some things are going to be a little differently. Okay, we're not going to have networking and dinners. That is a real shame. That's really what I enjoy, what live events are all about. So good news for you. Uh, tickets are going to be a little lower. You don't have to hop on a plane and take a hotel. Uh, DealMakerLiveEvent.com is the way is the place to get tickets, and uh, they are on sale right now. The ticket prices are the most affordable they will be, and they will continue going up as we start uh, getting closer to the event. So make sure you grab tickets and join us. That's going to be July 16, 18, the same dates we had today uh, that we've always had, except that unfortunately it won't be in person at the Hilton Anatole, which is a real, real shame. But we're still going to bring the, the, all, of, uh, all of the dealmakers all over the world together in one place virtually, and we're going to get together, and it's going to be an awesome time. DealmakerLiveEvent.com is a place to do that. Today's a real treat for me because, as you know, uh, one of my major role models and uh, is, is Robert Kusiaki and his book Rich Dad Poor Dad changed my life, as well as a lot of you watching and listening to this. And there's one, one other person who has made a major impact on me and uh, I would say influenced me the most in anything I know about online marketing, about blogging, building a list, uh, setting up a podcast, YouTube video, how to write email headers, all that stuff. There is one single person that I started following when I started in 2014, gosh, six years ago now, and that person is Pat Flynn. Literally everything I've learned with online marketing is uh, that I learned from Pat Flynn. He's on the show today. And the reason this is relevant is because in in our world right now, the way that you syndicate and scale your business is you have to have an online thought leadership platform. And there's no one better to learn from than Pat Flynn. So let's get right in the show. If you want to scale your syndication business, and honestly, who doesn't? Now, you, you may be at the point where uh, you, haven't, you know, haven't even done your first deal yet, or haven't raised a single dollar yet, but you want to. And you're like, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm not going to raise $100,000 or $300,000. I want to raise $10 million. How do you do that? If you study the big syndicators, and I consider us one, uh, one of those, we can raise $8 to $10 million in a few days. If you study people who can raise that way, what do they all have in common? They have massive thought leadership platforms. And when they have a, a, a deal, they have a live webinar, they invite their potential investors, they put the deal out there, there's a call to action, and all of a sudden, money flows in. It is a magical thing. An online thought leadership form is not only a way to scale your, your capital raising business, that's the primary purpose, but it goes much, much beyond that. In other words, you can have an impact on your audience. And, 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 and the way you do that is you really serve your audience. And in particular, our audience are potential investors who uh, traditionally may have been investing in the stock market and they're looking for alternatives because they're looking for a more consistent return, uh, less risky, less volatile, something that pays cash, uh, cash flow and has tax benefits. And we can provide that service to other people. Well, how do we reach those people? Once we've exhausted our personal network, how do we reach those people? And the answer is an online platform. And uh, today I'm just really honored to have Pat Flynn on, the, on this call. And really the only reason I got Pat Flynn on this podcast is because of my platform. Uh, Pat Flynn is a, is a really big deal in the, in the online marketing world. He's been around. He's got a massive following. And he, in turn, uh, through his platform, has attracted amazing guests like Tim Ferriss um, and others to his podcast as well. His podcast typically ranks around uh, rank 30 in the, business investing pod, in, in the business podcast, which is a big deal. And he's just a big deal. And not only is he a big deal, but he his philosophy is that he serves his people first and foremost. He's always asking, how can I serve you today? And I really resonate with that because I want to serve you in the best way that I can. So I'm just really pleased to have Pat Flynn on the show here today. Uh, we're going to learn a lot. I'm going to ask him all aspects. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to really cover on the show 
um, how you even go about building a platform, what's important around creating content. Well, how do you do that? And of course, a topic that's always hot and he's loved to talk about is starting a podcast. Uh, in fact, he teaches other people how to, how to do that. He's really good at it. his podcast is really good. So what I'm telling you is by the time you're done here, if you don't know who Pat Flynn is right now, you will. And you should follow everything he has put out and continues to put out. It's that awesome. So anyway, with all that build up, here we go. Let's get started with the show with Pat Flynn. <laughs> Pat, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me. That's really exciting to be able to talk to you. When I got started in 2014, you're the guy I followed. I followed everything you did, every how to create an email list, how to create a blog post, how to write headlines, uh, how to start a blog, how to start a YouTube video, what else? Ooh, how to write a book. Uh, so essentially everything I know I learned from you, Pat. So thanks for being here. Thank you for that. I'm glad that I could be of service. Uh, and, and, and now your audience is getting service from you. That's great. It's, it's, it's absolutely, it's, it's uh, awesome, the stuff you did. And one of the things that you're really strong at is putting out extremely high valued content that is so unbelievably usable. So, you know, when you finally put out a course, way too late, Pat, in my opinion, you know, people are like, I agree. finally, I can spend money with Pat. <laughs> <laughs> we should have done it earlier. There were a lot of things going in my head that were trying to block me from realizing that that was actually uh, something I should do. But since launching courses just a couple weeks ago or a, a couple years ago, uh, we've already generated over uh, $3.5 million in earnings. So uh, definitely, definitely looking back, uh, probably should have started sooner, but, you know, at least I get started, you know. Absolutely. We actually met first time in 2016 uh, at the Traffic Conversion Summit, um, and uh, in San Diego. that was San Diego, and that was that was pretty cool. And uh, you know, I, I want I want I want you to share your story briefly with people because, like so many of us, we we had you know full time W two jobs, and all of a sudden you didn't have one. What happened? Yeah. So 2008 recession. I was an architect. I uh, literally had my dream job. I was exactly where I wanted to be. And I was trying to hold on as long as I could. But unfortunately, and I know the exact date, June 17th, 2008, my boss calls me into his office. He tells me, he tells me I'm going to be let go, which was a huge blow. I didn't have a plan B. I did everything right that I was supposed to. I got uh, great grades, all the extracurriculars, graduated magna cum laude from Berkeley. I was like, there's no way that I can't have a secure position. But then I didn't have a job anymore. So after a few weeks of scrambling and not really knowing what to do next, uh, I got a lot of inspiration actually from a podcast where I learned, and a big shout out to Jason and Jeremy from Internet Business Mastery. That's where I learned that, wow, there's this whole online world where you could connect with people, you could serve others and get paid for, for information that you might have to share that could help them. So to make a long story short, I took some knowledge I had about an architectural exam that I had just passed. It's called the LEED exam, L-E-E-D. It's like a niche and a niche and a niche essentially. And then I built a website, I put up my notes on there, and sooner than later, I actually started to be seen as an expert in that space. And it was largely because I was very consistent with the content that I was publishing. I was trying really hard to create the best stuff that people were searching for. But more than that, I, I soon realized that after people found it, people started to share it too. And I started to notice that I had a lot of links coming back to my website that were on forums and architecture spaces. And then I started to become very active in those forums and showing up. And Eventually, I became synonymous with this exam and, and the study guides for it. And then in October of 2008, I published a study guide. I ended up making $7,905.88 in a single month, which was two and a half times what I was making as an architect. And it just blew my mind. And that was just with a $19 ebook. And I sort of became obsessed with how I might be able to figure out this online space because, uh, and, and also sharing that information along the way. I had a lot of people ask me, how did you do that? Can you share me your tactics? And I was like, Absolutely. I built this website called smartpassiveincome.com, published at the end of the year there. And I just started to share everything, including all the things I was learning, all the mistakes I was making, how much money I was making, how much money I was spending. And then I didn't realize it at the time, but I was also at the same time while doing that, building this uh, incredible empire, uh, helping people start businesses, because a lot of the people that were helping people in that space at that time, and even now, very much were the sort of like get rich quick kind of people. And that's not, that's not who I am at all. I actually despise that kind of stuff because the truth is this, this stuff is hard. It takes hard work. But if you are diligent, if you make the right moves, if you serve people, then you can get paid back in return. And my philosophy is your earnings are a byproduct of how well you serve your audience. So number one, you need to build that audience, which is where platforms come into play. And ever since then, I've actually started uh, beyond the blog a podcast, a YouTube channel. The podcast actually just passed 65 million downloads. The YouTube channel is about at a quarter million uh, or yeah, a quarter million subscribers. 
um, an email list of over a couple hundred thousand at this point as well. And I've been writing books and speaking on stages. And it's just become this amazing way to sort of give back for all the uh, incredible things that have happened early on in my days. And now I'm building new businesses publicly. I even have a software company. I have a, a company related to an invention that I had that just came out last year related uh, to videography and just a lot of fun things happening. And I'm just, I love being on shows like this to talk about anything that, that I can to help serve the audience listening. Yeah, I love it. It's just an incredible journey, Pat, that you've been on. Now, when you first got started, I mean, I, I know when I first got started and talking to other people, they're like, you know, I'm not really an expert um, at anything. Why should people listen to me? Why should I blog or put anything out? I'm, I'm not really the expert. How did you deal with that? I mean, the way that I dealt with it was that I just, uh, number one, that is something I was definitely telling myself. That's, I, th I think, the, the, when you're getting into the online space for the first time, that's often the question. Well, why would even anybody come find me? Why, like, what, what, what value do I even have to offer? There are so many other people talking about the same kinds of things. Like, why me? But I soon realized that you don't have to be a PhD, you know, you, you, you don't have to be like the certified only person in the world that talks about that thing, the leading world's expert to be qualified to help people. In fact, you just need to be a couple steps ahead of the people who you're serving. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be a, actually a, a much more relatable than somebody who has that PhD and doctorate and, and, and is just sort of in another world and doesn't even speak the same language as those who need help with that thing. And a, a quick story, I remember in March of 2009, so this was after I had the study guide for a few months, the United States Green Building Council, who is the company that writes the exam questions for the test that I was building a study guide for, came out with their own study guide. I don't know if they saw mine and saw how well it was doing or what, but they eventually came out with their own guide and I thought I was doomed. I was like, why would anybody buy from Pat Flynn, a person who didn't even get a great score on the exam, but just is a random person on the internet talking about this stuff. Why would they buy from me versus the company that writes the exam questions and their own study guide? Well, that month was my most profitable month ever. And I even asked my customers, well, in sort of a, 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 a back way, like, well, why did you buy from me and not them? And they said, well, because I can relate to you because you had just taken the exam yourself and I could understand the way that you were talking about the stuff and I trust you. So there's a number of things that kind of show up there. Number one, I was just a few steps ahead and as a result, I was the expert and I was a able to better help those people. But number two, the other side of this coin is that I showed up as a person. I became somebody a person could connect with other than uh, you know a company with, with, with no names behind it really, other than just organization. And so I think people, especially nowadays on the internet are craving connection. And when you can show up as a human and you become a human who can serve and help others, well, it's no question people are gonna continue to come back and then eventually become a super fan of what you might have to offer and want to be there as an ambassador and be there to help and be a repeat customer. And you can raise a lot of money doing uh, such things. Yeah, it's awesome. And you use the word super fan, which is the title of your latest book, which is, by the way, awesome. So everyone listening, watching this needs to uh, read this book. It really talks about how you engage your audience. So if you're raising capital, your audience is going to be passive investors. And so how do you engage them? How do you turn them into raving fans? And Pat talks about that. In, and as you always do in very actionable terms. So you guys definitely check that, that book out. Now, you use the words uh, smart passive income. That's the URL of your website, smart passive income. Now, when we talk about smart pa passive income, we're talking about real estate, Pat, which is right. much better than anything else, obviously. So what does smart passive income mean to you? Well, to me, I mean, and I very purposefully and strategically chose those words passive income to be my domain name and brand name specifically because even though I talk about business, I mean, there's all different kinds of passive income. But there were a lot of people at the time talking about passive income in terms of getting rich quick, pushing a couple buttons, and then all of a sudden you're on the beach with a laptop and sipping pina coladas. Like that's what passive income was. And I wanted to step in and go, no, <laughs> it's not like that. You have to put in the work up front and invest time and money up front to then be able to create additional time and money on the other end after putting in that hard work and if you can help others. And so for me, my definition, and everybody has different definitions, but for me, it's putting mechanisms in place that can help pay you back later. And that might be real estate. It might be building a business as an asset. It might be hiring a team or using software to help you serve an audience in, uh, on the internet in a more automated fashion. Um, you know, it, it, passive income can be also determined and defined in more of the sort of financial sense. Uh, but I like to take it from a business perspective. And real estate is definitely a part of that as well, though I have much less experience with that. I have a rental property. I do. But 
uh, I think, and what I, what my wheelhouse is, is building online properties, if you will, as assets that can pay you back in the future too. Right. So describe it really how, how it works in the online. What is the, the, the business model for online stuff? Just talk about some of the ways to do that. Yeah. So for number one, it's number one, you have to pick a, a market that you can serve a group of people, a niche, if you will, that you can come in and provide better service, better opportunities, better products for. And so step one is always research, going into a space and sort of laying out the land of what's in that space already, who's already serving that audience, what are their needs, what are their problems, what language do they use, so that when you create a platform, which is your next step, you, you create a platform, whether it's a podcast or a video channel or a blog or a website, to then speak on those things to help serve that audience there'll be a connection there. They see that you understand where they're at and when they understand where you're at, they're gonna immediately assume that you have the solutions or at least you're helping to create a solution over time. And then it becomes the monetization strategy and there's several different ways to monetize. I mean, if you have a large amount of traffic, which uh, you don't have to have in order to do very well, you can do things like sponsorships and advertising where you can have companies pay to get in front of this audience that you've built. However, there's many, many different kinds of ways to generate an income. You could potentially sell your own products like I have, whether it's a digital product or a physical product, using the market research that you've done and actually having real connections, real conversations with your target market, whether that's through an email list or on a blog or through social media or direct messages on social media, what have you, you can create a solution. You could even pre-sell that solution potentially to raise capital up front before you then go build the thing. For example, an online course, you could pre-sell a certain number of spots to determine even and validate whether or not that's something that actually people want. You can do affiliate marketing. I love affiliate marketing. That's the number one way that I've generated an income uh, before I started getting into online courses and creating my own products. Affiliate marketing is recommending and uh, offering other people's products, other people's solutions for your audience in exchange for essentially a commission. Um, sometimes it's referred to as a referral program or a partner program where you get a little bit of income when you feed a customer over to a product and it could become a win for everybody. Now, the big thing there is a lot of people in my space were taking advantage of actually just how easy affiliate marketing was and they made it sort of a negative thing. And what I mean is they find products that have a high commission and they just ram it down their audience's throat. They just send emails about it all day long until people finally buy or leave. And that's not the approach I would prefer to take. I would prefer to take, okay, well, what do you need help with? Great. Let me find a solution. I have one. Here it is. You know, you want to start a website? Great. I've done all the work to figure out what the best hosting platform is. Oh, you want to start a podcast? Great. There's millions of options. Here are the options I recommend for you. And of course, when people buy those things, then I get a commission. Everybody wins. The company wins. They get new customers. I win because I get a commission. And I've helped serve the audience by helping to sort of filter all the noise out there. And they get a product that they know is going to work. And, and that's affiliate marketing. And then there's other ways that you could generate an income that are sort of more unique and, and, and more modern now. For example, if you have a podcast, for example, you could potentially have your fans just essentially pledge to keep, you know, to support you using tools like Patreon. Patreon is a model that a lot of podcasters and YouTubers are using now such that you know, their fans could go, okay, well, I'd love to support you $10 a month. Great, that's amazing. Well, uh, times that by 1,000 true fans, you're making $10,000 a month from just people who wanna support you in exchange for maybe they get early access to things or you know, a monthly call with you or you know, swag of some kind. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on, but that, it, it's number one, picking a target market. Number two, creating a platform so that you can show up and become the authority. And then number three, being able to help serve them through products and advertising and such. Yeah, and, and it's what I love about that is a lot of things you talk about are directly transferable to the multifamily syndication space, uh, space because mm -hmm. you're still building a target market, which is a passive investor. These are people who are looking for alternatives to stock markets and yep. you are now serving them. And I love that that key word is serving them. How do you best serve them? In, in your case, my case, and I think also in this case, you serve them by educating them about the subject matter that you are an expert in, which is this alternative to the stock market, right? So you're educating, you're serving them with content. And the way that the business model in, in, works in our space is that when, when we actually have a deal, we can actually invite people to invest in that deal and we get paid doing that. The affiliate mm -hmm. marketing is interesting because in our world, uh, we also joint venture. You can have someone who raises capital with another experienced operator. So essentially selling uh, at someone else's deal. Now you're going to be a partner in that, in that deal. So the, the parallels are, are, are really stunning, but the core of it really cool. is serving people. And that's what you do exceedingly well. Um, and, and so when you're, when one is thinking about a build a platform, first of all, who should consider building a platform? Let's talk about that. I mean, honestly, I think everybody should, to me, it is, uh, your personal brand, if you will, 
such that you can do a lot of things when you build that audience base, even if it's a small one. And to give you an example, I recently invented a product. It's called the SwitchPod. It's like a fancy tripod that people who vlog use. Um, the legs of the tripod fold in to make it a selfie stick, essentially. And then it snaps out into a tripod really quickly. Anyway, um, I didn't start from scratch because I had a platform. Even though this was a completely new thing, the fact that I had an audience already and I sort of shared the journey with them and a lot of them have uh, video channels as well, when we launched in February 2019, it wasn't a surprise. They knew it was coming and actually they were excited and they wanted to get behind it. And even though a lot of them didn't buy it, they knew it was coming and they shared it with people who would be interested in it too. And we ended up raising $418,000 in 60 days for a brand new product, essentially validating it. And then of course, none of, not all of that was profit. A lot of that was used to build the tooling to make the product. But now that product is on Amazon. It is uh, potentially getting into big, big box retailers. It's definitely on uh, retail stores online already. And it's just become a business of its own. And it was because of the platform and the ability to have a place to announce, a place to connect, a place to build relationships, and a place to prove authority. Uh, you know, that, that you can do so much with that. You know, even, even if you're kind of lost and not sure what to do yet, just putting yourself up there and actually starting to make connections and, 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 and discover the needs of others, but also have other people discover you. That's the other beauty of this is online. I mean, there's millions of people, right? So you might be like, well, like, how do I stand out? Well, nobody's like you. You are 100% original. So when you show up, you become that human. And business to me today, no matter what it is, we're talking real estate, online business, whatever. It's to me no longer B2B or B2C. As my, as my buddy Chris Ducker says, it's P2P person to person hmm. and having a platform allows you to show up as a person and for people to find you and, uh, and, and begin to trust you to know, like, and trust you and want to do business with you too. Yeah. I didn't know you raised money for that thing. So you got, I'm going to call you a syndicator, Pat Flynn, the syndicator. <laughs> I love that. And the other thing you said was that everyone should build a platform and that is really interesting to me. And I actually kind of agree with that. Everyone should build a platform. I think that's uh, I think that's really, really cool. Now, when someone is thinking about building a platform, what should someone go through? Like, give us an idea of what that will entail. What am I, what am I going to be doing over the next month, year? Like, what is my activity like when I'm building a platform? What's What are some of the considerations there? Sure. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of different kind of platform uh, lanes, if you will. And I would just choose one to start with. I mean, I know a lot of people who want to be, be everywhere all at once at the start, and you're just going to burn yourself out. My suggestion would be no matter which route you choose, you make it easy on yourself and you just stick with one and you go with it. And you sort of master that before you move on to something else. And what I'm talking about specifically is maybe you're going to start a blog, in which case your activity is going to be writing, right? And even if you're not a great writer, trust me, I wasn't a great writer either. But you you learn how to do it by just by just doing it and and you know sort of forcing forcing yourself to to, to learn the ropes. And it's going to be bad at first. It's, it always is. You have to be a disaster before you become the master. But blogging would mostly entail writing. And there are such easy ways to get started today. I mean, everything from uh, WordPress, which is a blogging platform to uh, Squarespace and uh, Wix. And I mean, it's just so easy to set it up. There's really no excuse these days. Like we can't use technology as an excuse anymore. The only excuse is just you questioning whether or not this is going to work or not. And um, the truth is, if you don't do anything, well, then it's guaranteed not to work. Uh, the other platforms that we could discuss are podcasting, which is sort of my wheelhouse. And, and I love that because it's a lot easier for me to talk whether it's just to the microphone and to the audience, just me alone, or the guest who I might have on the show, which adds another level of flavor to the podcast. And it's just really nice to have the audience listen in on a conversation where I could bring in on an expert, for example. And honestly, I teach a lot of po uh, people podcasting and I ask people, well, why do you want to start a podcast? And one of the number one reasons why people want to start a podcast is because today podcasts are very valuable uh, asset that one could use to just connect with people, to build relationships. Even if nobody ever listened to the show, the fact that you have a podcast allows for a conversation to, for you to bring people on and, and connect with them and build relationships with them. So there may, there might be uh, people who you might want to connect with who you, you think that you might not have access to, but when you have a podcast, it becomes something that you could offer for them. And to give you an example, I was able to interview people like Gary Vaynerchuk and Tim Ferriss on my show and have conversations. And now guess what? We're friends. And me and Gary V are on the board of uh, Pencils of Promise, which helps build schools around the world. And like, we're connected now. It's, it's really amazing. Uh, me and Tim Ferriss, we text each other. It's like, that would have never happened if I didn't have a, have a podcast and a platform. And that's, again, another reason to build a platform. But it's just these conversations. Uh, and of course, the relationship that you could build with your audience through your voice 
just like what people are listening to right now is just it, it is unmatched in my opinion. Now, video is another interesting thing. And on YouTube, you have the benefit of the YouTube algorithm and Google sort of all playing in, 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 in the ability to, to, to be found through search uh, and build a community there, there as well. But it is a little bit more difficult to have video and audio and to make it engaging, especially because on YouTube, people's attention spans are like that of a goldfish. So you really need to work hard to keep people focused and engaged. Whereas a podcast, people are listening to you for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. I listen to Joe Rogan, maybe two, three hours at a time, which is again, unmatched. Uh, so that wh whatever platform you choose, that's the activity that you would do. And the main thing is you, you just want to be consistent with your content. You don't have to come out with something every day or even every week. As long as you have and commit to some sort of regularity in the content so that people can regularly assume that you're going to be able to be there and help them, well, then that's, it's going to win no matter what platform you choose. It just might take some experimentation to, 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 to sort of get your legs going. Yeah, I mean, producing content regular is, is, a, is a one thing. And that's when I speak to people are like, um, yeah, I, I'm not really, I don't know if I can do that. I'm not really a writer. I don't like the way I look on video. I, I don't know if I can do that. You're asking me to do too much. But what are your tips for producing content consistently? So number one, I always recommend having planning sessions. And I do this once a quarter to understand, okay, well, what's the content that I'm going to create later? Where we don't want to be, which is where I was for the first six years of my business that almost burnt me out, was waking up on that day and going, okay, what am I going to write about? Or waking up on that day and going, okay, well, I guess I have to figure out what I'm going to podcast about. You never want to get to that sort of moment because then it feels like a chore versus what a CEO does in their business is they plan ahead. Mm. So you might have a quarterly meeting with your team or even just yourself to go, okay, well, this next quarter, what's the content that we're going to talk about? What are the big things that are happening in the world right now that we could discuss? What are the most pressing questions that my audience has? And then also on top of that, what you could do that's very uh, beneficial when you plan ahead is you can go, okay, well, you know, let's just say, for example, in, in July, I want to plan a launch of my course. Great. So now that it's May, for example, I'm going to plan for content around my course in July to help people overcome objections, to really support the idea of getting involved with something like that. And then come July, you launch and everybody's now warmed up to that idea. And, it's, and the launch, you, you've already started the launch process by seeding that topic versus you can't do that if you're just waking up every day and trying to create content. So that's number one. And number two, to make it even easier on yourself, definitely focus on what are the questions people are asking because those are likely the questions people are typing into Google, the questions that people are gonna come to you for. And the beauty of this as well, like I, for, for, for me, for example, I have a show called Ask Pat where for the first thousand episodes, I just answered people's questions. Like that's literally where the content came from. And I actually used a tool called SpeakPipe to collect the voicemails from my audience. So people were actually hearing other members of the audience and feeling like a community and, well, I have that question too kind of thing. So we answered a thousand questions. After a thousand, we eventually started to move into more of a coaching call because a lot of the questions started to repeat and I wanted to get a little bit deeper with people. But anyway, now if I get an email and people ask a question, my assistant goes, okay, have we done an Ask Pat episode about that yet? Oh, we have. Well, let me just send them the answer. And now they're hearing my voice. Now they're subscribed to the podcast. We've answered their question. They're hearing another person in the community. There's no way they're not going to be interested in coming in deeper with me after that. So that's another great strategy for platform is that you can use that to be essentially a giant FAQ so that you can prove yourself, you can prove authority, and that you can help people sooner. And then, of course, they're going to want to invest in you or, or invest, you know, share you and, and what have you. Yeah, I love that. And so basically just listen to your audience. What are they, what are they asking? And then just answer the questions and whatever medium you choose, whether it's video, podcast, or, or a blog. And, and I think that's great because you, you very rarely run out of stuff, at least for the first, I don't know, six to 12 months. And then you can start recycling stuff. <laughs> it's probably what you Yeah, do. exactly. And, and if you have an email list, you can take this one step further. I would uh, utilize what's called an autoresponder sequence. An autoresponder sequence is if you, ser you, if you sign up for an email service provider, yes, you can send emails like, you know, you want to type out an email now, it gets sent to everybody. Or, and you can write what's called an autoresponder sequence. These are emails that you pre-write ahead of time that get sequentially sent to the people after they subscribed, after whatever sort of frequency you want. So let's say you write 10 emails, you can say, okay, these emails are already written after a person subscribes, let's send one every week until they get through the 10. It's done automatically for you, right? That's an autoresponder sequence. Imagine what you can do having pre-written emails sent to people who just subscribed to sort of guide them into something. But one of those emails can be simply an email that just says, what are you struggling with right now? 
hit reply and let me know. I'll see what I can do to help you. And now, because that's automated, every day you could potentially get people going, hey, I need help with this or you know, do you have any resources on that or whatever. And you can start to see patterns on what people are asking about more than others. That has led to blog content that I've created, courses that I've created that have made millions, and even books that I've written simply because, well, I see what people are asking for more than others and, um, and it's automated. So you can automate that process too. Love that. Listen to your audience and uh, produce content around that. Love that. Let's talk about podcasts because obviously you're really good at it. In fact, you teach on this thing as well, but it's also a very large commitment to, to do this. In fact, you have you know two podcasts, which is insane. I have one. It's, uh, you know, it's plenty for me, but why do you keep <laughs> doing it? To clarify, I actually have five podcasts oh, for and I've loud. recorded over 1,400 episodes. One podcast I actually recently sold. I mean, so anyway, there's a, there's a lot of things going on in the podcasting space, but I love it for many, many reasons. Number one, just the ease of creation. Even though I wasn't great at first, uh, I was not a good communicator. I mean, I remember recording my first episode three times, not thinking it was good enough, but once you get it out there, you get, you get, you get the wheels turning, you, you can get it going and you can, you can be, you know, as a byproduct, become a great communicator as well. But I also love it because it helps build amazing relationships with the people who are listening on the other end. And it is the only kind of content that can be passively consumed while doing other things. For example, in the car or on a walk or at the gym. And this is why you have retention rates of 80 to 100% on episodes and people listening for several minutes, sometimes hours, versus blogs, which are read between five to 10 minutes and then they move on, or videos with five minutes or more is really good on YouTube. I mean, half hour to hour is very common in the podcasting space. And more than that, this is very evergreen content as well. So once you have your show up, I mean, people are still listening to episode number one from 2010 in my archive. And I'm now automatically building fans as they go through and binge listen to, you know, thousands of episodes now, which is, which is really incredible. And I even get thank you letters now from people for the work that I've done to help them. And 99% of them mention the podcast. Uh, the cool thing about the way podcasting works is after you sort of set up, it becomes really simple. You just have to record your episodes, you upload them to your podcast host, and because everything is already connected, Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, all the places where podcasts exist, they automatically read that you have a new show. I mean, you don't have to upload every individual episode to all those individual places. It's so easy once you get started. It's not push button easy to get started, but it's now simpler more than ever to get started. And here's the other thing about podcasting that's huge. Currently, there are over 500 million active blogs out there. There's about 30 plus million active YouTube channels pumping out, you know, hundreds of hours of content every minute at this point. There are still less than 1 million podcasts in the world. We are very close to approaching that, but the numbers are staggering in terms of how early we are in the days of podcasting. Plus, we're starting to see the podcast listenership grow like crazy. It is now mainstream. And it's because people who have large audiences elsewhere are now starting podcasts, which are now introducing podcasts to different audiences. Like, I mean, even celebrities, right? Like the Obamas, for example, are going to do an exclusive podcast on Spotify. I mean, that's going to bring hundreds of thousands, if not millions of new podcast listeners. And here's the other thing. On average, people are subscribed to seven different shows, not just one. They don't just have one and then, and then they're done. They're, they're subscribed to multiple. I know people who are subscribed to 20, 30, even 40 different podcasts. So you don't have to compete. You just have to complement a person's playlist. So, I mean, it's wide open in my opinion. And this is why I'm very bullish on podcasting, why I teach it. I have courses about it. I, I have the number one YouTube tutorial on podcasting. And it's my number one video right now because it's so hot. And I recommend you start one because it's, it's also fun. You can connect with a lot of people too. So uh, just uh, wave your hands a little bit about the process of starting one. You said once you have it, it's relatively easy to put stuff up. But what is the general process of, of, of setting it up? So before we even get into the tech stuff, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute because it's actually not as hard as you might think uh, tech-wise, uh, we really need to focus on your show, what it's going to be, the name of it, the artwork, like the branding behind it is really, really important because people, before they even listen to one second of your show, they're going to read your title and see your artwork. So we really need to focus in on what your show is going to be about. How is it going to help people? How are you going to position it? And then also your content inside your podcast. How are we going to position that? What are you going to talk about? Very similar to what we talked about earlier. You can just answer people's questions uh, initially, to be honest. But then after that, we can get into the tech. So you're going to need to record into something like a microphone. The most important piece of equipment you have is your microphone. Now, thankfully today, there are really, really amazing sounding microphones that are extremely 
extremely inexpensive. The one that I recommended for years, which I see you're using right the now. ATR. Is the audio That's why I got it, Pat. It's amazing, right? And you sound fantastic. It's It runs $60, $70 on Amazon. However, I don't know if you know this, but they just discontinued I it. I saw that. I was going to recommend that thing and send them a link, and I noticed it discontinued. What should we do now, Pat? <laughs> there is an equivalent that is good, if not even better, for even cheaper. It's the Samson, S-O-N, not Samsung, but Samson Q2U. And it's a USB plug-in mic, just like the ATR. And the beauty of that is you can literally just plug it in your, in your computer and you're going to sound like you have a $400 broadcast microphone. Um, and you don't need all those crazy boxes, amplifiers, uh, rigs, or anything. You just plug directly into your computer. And then in terms of software to record into, I used GarageBand for the first six years of my business. Uh, and then I moved on to uh, a premium product called Adobe Audition, which isn't even necessary. Uh, it just works better for my workflow. And then if you are not on a Mac or you don't prefer GarageBand, you can use Audacity, which is, guess what, also free. So we've only spent money on a microphone right now. Now, of course, you could also buy like a boom arm to remove the mic off of your computer or uh, off of your computer desk or what have you. But like literally about a hundred bucks to get started. And then the only other thing you need is a, is a podcast host, which costs maybe five to $10 a month. That's where you upload the files. You then define your show title, your description, all the things there. And those hosts give you what's called the RSS link. That is a link that you want to tattoo on your forehead because that's the most important link in the world. That's what you submit to Apple. That's what you submit to Spotify. That's what you submit everywhere else. Such that when you publish a podcast episode and your host, those directories just automatically see that you have a new show up and it gets pushed out automatically to all your subscribers. And that's essentially how podcasting works. It's not as hard as you might think. That is awesome. Now, what are, you, what are some of the mistakes that you see people make? Because there are people just, they are just you know, gung-ho and they start their podcast and you're like, you got to shake your head. Like, what, what are you seeing out there? <laughs> So number one, when you launch, launch with more than one episode. I would launch with three already available on, on launch day, like three in one day. And the reason for that is I like to feel like the, the analogy I use is, is your podcast is like a stage. Like you command that kind of authority as if you were on stage. You have that level of attention as if you were on a stage. And if you were a musician, for example, and you got on stage and you got, you know, you sold tickets to it, you, you build up hype for your concert and you got everybody ready and you go and you get up on stage and you say, hey, welcome everybody, thanks for, for having me today. Uh, I can't wait to play this music for you. Here's what the music is about. All right, I'll see you next week. Thanks so much, I appreciate you. Uh, that's not gonna be received very well because likely your first episode is just gonna be an introduction. If that's all you have, well, you're sort of leaving people hanging. You wanna have a set. So three episodes, including your intro, and the beauty of that is you can actually have like your second episode be about a, uh, one subtopic in your space, as a third episode could be about another subtopic. So let's say, for example, you're a fitness podcaster, Episode one is your intro. Episode two could be about nutrition. Episode three it could, could be about your strength training routine. I might be more interested in nutrition before strength training. So I'm going to listen to episode two first. I'm not interested in who you are yet. I don't know who you are, but I'm interested in nutrition. And then I go, wow, this is incredible. Okay, let me go back to episode one now and then episode three. And now there's more opportunities for you as a podcaster to have your call to action in there to get more ratings, more downloads, more reviews, to climb higher in the rankings, all that stuff. So that's going to be your launch strategy. Another mistake I see people use uh, or, or do is... Um, they try to fit their show in a specific time, like, oh, my episodes are gonna be 25 minutes exactly. And I think a range is okay, but trying to get to an exact time frame is not going to be the best thing to do because imagine you conduct this amazing interview, you're at 25 minutes, but you haven't even gotten to the purpose or the great story. Oh, time's up, sorry, topic. sorry, Pat, sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> exactly, you're not gonna cut people off. At the same time, if you, if you record a perfect episode, it's everything you need, needed to say and nothing more, and it's 15 minutes, are you just gonna like, twiddle your thumbs and talk about what you had for breakfast for 10 minutes to fill in that gap? No. Um, it, shorter can be great too. So I think s sticking within a range as far as how long your episode should be, should be, should be the goal. And then in terms of frequency, you don't have to uh, come out daily. You don't have to even come out weekly, but again, very similar to what we talked about earlier, just come out regularly. I came out every other week because that's all I could fit into my life at the start. And then, um, and then eventually when I saw the power behind it, I, I tripled down on it. And then the final tip is when you're editing, um, don't edit every breath. Don't edit every um. You're going to waste so much time doing that. Let them be in there. You're going to notice them because it's you and it's your voice, but most people won't. And just be okay with making mistakes. Uh, put it out there. It's going to be a disaster, but you got to get through that before you master it. And then after just even a few episodes, you're going to get your, your wheels turning and, and it's going to get going for you. So 
just know that it's not going to be perfect out of the gate and uh, you'll have a much better time and also just have fun with it. I mean, it's, it's so much fun. Like when you were a kid and you recorded your voice and you listened to it again, that plus the idea that you can help people at the same time. I mean, it's a winning combo. Yeah. And so there's a lot more to be said about setting up a podcast and, and maintaining it and, uh, and promoting it. And you have some really, really good resources. And I'm going to stick all those things on the michaelblank.com forward slash Pat. And we're going to have everything Pat on there. All my highlights of the Pat Flynn resources and podcasts is going to be one of them. I think you have one that you know kind of says it's kind of how to set up and talk a little bit more about your, your two courses that you have about podcasts. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. I, yeah, if anybody out there is listening and is interested in starting a podcast, I mean, go to that page and, and click on that link. Uh, that'll be an affiliate link so that uh, Michael gets a little kickback for that if you go through that, which would be great because he's done so much to help you too. Uh, but Power Up Podcasting is my beginner's course and it will take you like literally step by step, A to Z, everything you need to know, including how to market and even monetize your show. And it's helped over 2,500 people already. And my favorite piece of uh, my, my favorite testimonials are the ones that go, Pat, this is the only course I've actually ever finished and completed in my whole life of all the online courses I've ever created or built uh, or sorry, taken. Um, and I'm very proud of that because my goal is to help you actually get things done and get results from it too. And I have a number of students who have literally gone full time. They've quit their jobs and they've gone full time because their podcast has just done so much for them. I, I, uh, a friend of mine, Rob, uh, has a travel agency and uh, also his business increased by 348%. He's turning people away now just because he can't handle the loads of clients and leads that are coming in. Like your podcast can do that for you. And that's what I want to teach you how to do with Power Up Podcasting. And if you already have a podcast, I have a sort of 201 course, a more advanced one, using tactics and strategies that you can only do when you have a show. And that's called Amped Up Podcasting, AMP. That stands for automate. So we're going to take yourself out of the editing process so that all you have to do is record. Nothing else is done by you. Everything else is done by other people or tools or software. M then that on that the, the automation then allows you to uh, take advantage of the marketing situations that you have now. That's the M and AMP. And then P is now profit. Let's build a business out of this thing, turning into a, a cash money making machine. And that again can only happen uh, after you do a lot of those other things first. But yeah, thanks for letting me talk about that. I, you know, serving people with podcasts is my favorite thing in the world. Yeah, it's awesome. And you're the best at it. So the michaelblank.com forward slash Pat is where we're going to stick all that stuff. Uh, so what's kind of your your parting advice to someone? Okay, I, this is great. I want to build a platform of whatever. I'm, I'm going to YouTube channel, podcast, I'm going to blog. But what is your advice to that person? Because they're probably they're probably afraid or they're going to procrastinate or they're, gonna, they're, they're not going to do it. Um, right. <laughs> what's your what's your advice to, to people who are like, yeah, I really want this? So I know that there might be some fear or some procrastination reasons to not do it. I mean, you're going to tell them, you're going to tell that to yourself for sure. But I would also consider, well, what are you missing out on as a result of not doing this? There are so many beautiful, amazing, unforeseen opportunities that can happen when you when you put yourself out there. I mean, my podcast allowed me to be in a Hollywood film like that happened. And I didn't even know that that was going to be a thing. And what does that make possible for you? Having a platform, having that connection to your audience. And the number one thing I would recommend is just, just, just get started and try to get a small result. And what I mean by result is try to connect with somebody on the other end, uh, whether they're on an email list or they find you on social media, see what it might be like to have a direct conversation with them and how they're affected by the content that you created. Because I truly, truly promise you, something changes in your brain when you realize that you have this ability to do one thing and help a real person on the other end, but not just help one help many, many, many more people on a scalable level, especially with a thing like a podcast, right? Like I'm in, I'm in my office recording and I'm just one person, but then every time I record an episode and I publish it, I mean, I'm walking into the Tennessee Vols football stadium with a hundred thousand people in the audience who are there listening to me. And thankfully that's not actually what happens because I would freak out in front of that many people in real life. So I don't actually have to be there as an introvert and see those people, but I am helping that many people all at once. But to the listener on the other end or to the reader on the other end or to the viewer on the other end, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. And that's the beauty. You can build these real relationships. So, so just get started and realize that um, you are holding yourself back from helping others. Are you really going to let that fear get in the way? And of course, when you help others, you're going to get paid back in return uh, in many different ways. Um, so yeah, I mean, just, just get started. I mean, really, that, that's the secret. Yeah, it's awesome. And you, you, you brought the value, man, as you always do. Thank you, man. Um, how can people connect with you, Pat? Uh, so you can check me out. Uh, my main website where I teach business, smartpassiveincome.com. Uh, you can find that there with a bunch of guides on all the things sort of that, that, that we talked about, including affiliate marketing, email marketing, 
uh, business fundamentals, uh, platform building, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then my personal site at patflynn.com where I talk about a bunch of other things that are interest to, uh, of interest to me, like technology and gaming and parenting and you know education for kids and that kind of stuff too. So patflynn.com and patflynn on uh, most social media channels as well. It's awesome, Pat. Great honor to have you here today. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. So if you've never heard of Pat Flynn before, now you have. And it's going to be a household name to you because I want you guys to follow everything that he has ever produced. He's got the most, the best resources for anything related to digital marketing, online marketing, from building your starting your list, building your list, starting a podcast, scaling your podcast, anything related to building your platform, writing blog posts, headlines, subjects, everything. I was listening to him when I got started in 2014. And literally, I've, I've learned almost everything I possibly could about online marketing from Pat Flynn, and I'm just so honored to have him on the show. I'm going to put a bunch of useful resources on a single page at themichaelblanc.com forward slash Pat, things that I think are going to be most relevant to you. Uh, but definitely head on over to his website, smartpassiveincome.com, and check out everything he has once you've exhausted that, that list as well. So I'm going to adapt all this stuff. All this platform building stuff, we talked about it generically because it's generic. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. Uh, building a platform is meaningful in a variety of ways. It's to get your message out, to reach uh, hundreds of thousands of people, to sell books, to do really to have an impact in the world. And that is the importance of a platform. In the context of syndication, we can also make a difference in the world by educating people who are normally in the stock market about multifamily syndications. In so doing, if we build our platform, we can raise more and more capital and uh, get it out of Wall Street into what I call kind of Main Street as well. So we're going to be adapting the gener general things about building a platform specifically for syndication. And uh, we've actually started teaching this thing. It's called the Platform Builder Workshop. And I have a free training um, that I have available to that and as well that we have open enrollment for the workshop itself here in the month of April and, and early May. So head on over to themichaelblank.com forward slash platform and uh, register for that, tr for that training and possibly that workshop if you're interested. But I'm going to teach in that class how you can build your platform to essentially raise millions seemingly effortlessly in just days. We're going to talk about how do you capture leads when they go to your website. How do you get people then to actually invest with you and schedule a call with you, people who want to uh, actually talk to you to invest with you, how to present a, li a live deal via webinar and the automations behind that, and how to produce content consistently. All those things we're going to teach on the Platform Builder workshop. So head on over to the michaelblank.com forward slash platform right now and register for that uh, live webinar if, uh, if you're listening to this. If you're listening to this a little bit later on, we're going to have a recorded version of that. So the URL will still be live. Head on over that and grab the free training as well. I think it's going to open your eyes to the fact that we are really essentially in two businesses. Yes, we are in the real estate investing business, but we're also in an online marketing business. Two separate businesses that are very, very much related and as they should. If you study anyone who's raised really any money to any scale, look at what they have. They all have platforms. They have a podcast. They have lead magnets. They have, they have books. They have events. Now, I'm not saying you have to have all those things. You can reach a lot of people simply by having the platform that I just described. So check that out, definitely. And I want you to uh, become a student of online marketing. Look, look, we have, yes, we want to raise money for syndication business, and that's a worthwhile effort. But more importantly, really think about the mission that you're on. And that is really to get people out of Wall Street into Main Street by educating them around this a fantastic product that you already know about, which is investing in multifamily syndications. Uh, consistent return, less volatility, cash flow, extraordinary tax benefits, removing the uncertainty out of financial planning. That is very much something that we all want to talk about. So become a student of online marketing because you are able to reach more people and make a bigger impact if you do that. In so doing, follow everything that Pat Flynn does. So head on over to themichaelblank.com forward slash Pat and check out the resources there. And then shortly thereafter, go to themichaelblank.com forward slash platform and check out the free training where we adapt that specifically to the syndication business. So hope you guys found that valuable. Um, and I want you guys to stay safe in these uh, uncertain times. And a lot of us are home now, and it's a great time to actually educate ourselves about this newfound thing, which is online marketing. So subscribe to Pat's podcast and binge listen to his podcast episodes, consume his content, and really learn about this wondrous new world of platform building. You guys stay safe out there. I'll talk to you next time.
Hey, and before you leave, make sure you subscribe to my channel below. We put out videos every single week and you don't want to miss it. Also, if you haven't done so already, grab my free ebook here, okay? It's a secret to raising money to buy your first apartment building deal. It's a good one, so grab that. And hey, check out another video.